Tesla continues to build its mystery factory in Texas. Now, it's not actually technically building it, it's technically leasing it, but it's leasing a series of factories. And a lot of people are thinking, well, what is this all for? But we do actually know what it's all for. And it's extremely important for Tesla's new cheap, affordable electric cars. I mean, honestly, without these factories, those cheap EVs probably would not be actually possible. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Phenomenal to see you. Great to, um, great to be able to be at the Melbourne EV Show on the 10th of August. The tickets are very, very cheap. We'd love to see you there. I'll put a link in the description below. Xpeng, Zika, uh, BYD, a range of different EVs are going to be there. Polestar's new, Polestar 4 and Polestar 3. Anyway, come and, come and check it out. What's going on here, guys, with this, this Tesla factory? 183 square feet. Um, series of factories here in Texas that Tesla, uh, well, they're leasing. Now, apparently these it's a, a rail-served building. So Tesla can actually use a railway um, from this building to get to access points. And it's at the RCR Taylor Logistics Park in Taylor, Texas. Now, a lot of people have heard about this, but they don't actually know what's going on here. Apparently, Tesla will have more than 1 million square feet of combined property in Kyle, Hutto, and Taylor. These sites will offer support to Tesla, but a lot of people are a bit confused here. I mean, Tesla's factory is actually 10 million square feet. So this 1 million square foot of space that Tesla are leasing um, is in addition to Tesla's massive gigafactory. And there's curiosity here about what Tesla are actually gonna do here. Well, we pretty much know here that um, Tesla have advertised for jobs for these factories, right? Kyle, Texas, Kyle, Texas, Kyle, Texas, manufacturing, manufacturing, supply chain. Um, incoming quality supervisor, supervisor, cell manufacturing. Incoming quality technician, cell batteries. I think Tesla will be building a combination of two different batteries, initially 4680 battery cells. Now, though Tesla's a little bit, Musk is a little bit pissed off about the, what, what's going on with those, the delays with the uh, dry coating and battery doping process, they've been a bit of a, um, a bit of a disappointment. But Tesla's main batteries that they'll be making at that factory will actually be chill, the Chillin 2.0 battery from CATL. Now that's the most advanced battery that CATL make. It's cheap as well. The Chillin battery was previously an NCM battery. So the 1.0 battery was, a, was an NCM, nickel cobalt manganese battery. That was a slightly higher energy density at the pack level than 4680 cells from Tesla. Now they are lithium ion phosphate. So now they're actually cheaper to manufacture. The energy density is similar to the previous generation, but they charge these batteries at 560 kilowatt. Now, obviously you need the right architecture to make that work, but it does work. I mean, Zika have uh, multiple EVs in China that charge at those speeds using those batteries. So do other, so does a couple of other car brands. That's the battery technology I believe Tesla will be manufacturing there under license from CATL. It's a, honestly, this is the kind of move that Tesla needs to make a $25,000 electric car. Putting these batteries in an EV is the perfect scenario in North America. Now, it's very cold in the US. Most people live in cold areas. Then, of course, there's Canada as well. That's a whole new level, a whole different level of cold. But these batteries, even at minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit, lose almost nothing in terms of capacity. It's about a 5% loss at minus 30 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They have none of the problems that lithium ion phosphate batteries have in extreme cold temperatures. They have incredibly fast charging and the highest energy density of any lithium ion phosphate batteries in the world. Plus, they are cheap to manufacture. That is how Tesla will be able to make a $25,000 EV, make an affordable car, make um, huge numbers of batteries, huge numbers of cars, and do it without incurring, you know, do it with, in, with the ability to actually make a profit selling cheap electric cars. That's really, really difficult to do. So that's what this factory here is actually for. Very clearly, the initial production will be 4680 cells. But Tesla, alongside 4680 battery cell production, will we know this has been confirmed that Tesla are in fact planning on getting CATL staff, manufacturing staff, they will come to Texas, they'll set up all the machines, they'll show Tesla staff how to work this stuff. Um, you know, honestly, this would be a good job, guys. Um, I mean, if you, if you know anyone that's in the US and they want to work at this factory, I think this is going to be a real growing part of Tesla's business because Tesla will probably use these batteries, these cells, in addition for energy storage. Now that's the fastest growing part of Tesla's business by a mile, energy storage, energy deployment, putting back power walls, mega packs. That's probably potentially in the long term what Tesla will make here at this site. 
not just mega packs, but the actual cells that go into the mega packs. So this combination of 4680 cells alongside CATL's Chillin 2.0 battery, LFP battery pack, battery cells, that's the future of Tesla's cars. 4680 cells may not be the future of Tesla, but almost certainly CATL's lithium ion phosphate batteries will be. Keep in mind, Ford are going to manufacture these as well. Ford, in fact, have already made the plant that will actually make these cells. Now they're basically waiting on this technology to come to the US. Ford are saying, actually, they put LFP batteries production on hold simply to wait for this to happen, this licensing technology. Now, Republicans are not happy about this. Democrats are not happy about this. They feel like this is a Chinese invasion. Keep in mind, though, China won't own these factories. They won't own the batteries. Tesla and Ford will simply pay. They will pay CATL a licensing fee. So it's not really a Chinese invasion in the way the media or the way that politicians are trying to frame it. Anyway, that's the news we have on this, guys. This would enable Tesla, by the way, to put a smaller battery pack in, say, a, let's say Tesla just said, well, let's use a Model 3. In this theoretically, right? Let's say they wanted to use a Model 3. They could theoretically put a, like a 50 kilowatt hour battery in a Model 3 and still get probably about 280 miles of range. That's a small battery pack and maybe even 300 miles of range. But that battery is also going to be very, very affordable, much more affordable than what it is to manufacture, say, Panasonic 4680s or Panasonic 2170s or LG chems, whatever batteries you can think of, 4680s from Tesla. These batteries are cheaper. They are better in cold weather. They charge faster and have longer range than Tesla or anyone else's batteries. So they're an absolute no-brainer. Thanks for watching.